Okay. The reason why I want to do that is because, again, I, I'm probably not the best person to, you know, help with everything. And uh, we already have a pool of people that are kind of like full-timing this. And I want to, to bridge the connections and just include everyone on, on this. So hopefully, you know, our conversation will be a, a productive way to onboard them in, into this. Sure. Okay. That sounds great. All right. Um, so for, for agenda today, I kind of like listed out figuring out the key pieces for COVID-19 funding platform. And for, you know, key things, I listed out key human resources needed, messaging, data slash curation, costs, um, the infrastructure costs, developers to help with any customization of the platform if needed, projects to fill in ASAP, and sustainability of the project, the revenue sharing model exploration. Okay, that sounds like a good rundown. Um, well, I'll let you, I'll let you pick up. Okay, um, uh, maybe to start with um, first, the assertion that um, a, a funding platform or tool uh, is only as good as its curation. Um, so the tool in tech is not an end in itself. Um, it's really about the, um, the, the skills and, and literally the extroversion of the community manager <laughs> and, and the people who have to, um, by nature, thrive and derive joy from bringing people together. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's not every people, by the way. Yeah, it, it, yeah they do exist. I, I used to be one of them when I was younger. Um, no, maybe I still am. I, I do enjoy it. But um, it takes a certain um, willingness to go out on a limb and, and also to try to onboard, to convince, to, um, to invite um, participation from those who might not be usual suspects. So, um, so just to start with that, I think uh, if such a tool is going to have success, we need ideally one, if not two, or one and a half uh, resources uh, who are um, bright and young and bushy-tailed <laughs> and, and extroverted who can do the outreach and some of the, the work involved. It's a combination of like virtual, it's like it just comms. And we have some templates that we've built up in our system that can do multiple deals in a showcase or a single deal in a showcase, or it could be a piece of knowledge share, or, you know, it could be something else, uh, an event or whatever would be helpful to kind of um, visualize what this person would do on a daily basis. So let's imagine this person is like full-time person, right? And they, they work uh, 40 hours per week. So let's imagine what, what they actually do every day, like from, from the routine type of tasks, if, if there is some. Uh, I think I lost you. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was muted. Um, definitely. So, uh, one, so one task um, is comprised of keeping a constant eye on the landscape and making sure that um, a multi-sided user system has to be curated on all sides. Um, typically, for this kind of thing, because you're orienting the whole thing as like a giant virtual buffet table to a bunch of donors, funders, and investors, it's better to have the buffet filled before you actually call them to the table. So um, the pipeline, uh, populating the pipeline is probably task number one. Uh, that said, it doesn't need to be like, you know, 30 deals deep. You can start with 10, five, so 10. Like an hour a day is just basically going uh, online and researching exciting new ideas and projects related to COVID-19 that yes. need support, right? Yes. So um, on the assumption that one finds those projects, there's probably a little bit of extra work involved in supporting those leading those projects to make sure that they're... Um, that they are real projects capable of absorbing capital. Uh, and so it speaks to the packaging. Um, 
no judgment or commentary on for-profit, non-profit structures, cooperative structures, I, you know, totally agnostic. This is a form of due diligence in a way that is mostly related to viability of the project, right? Yeah, very basic due diligence. Uh, I don't think you can get too deep. Um, kind of like a list of checks, like checklist for this or something. Um, I, I'm sure it exists in, in your kind of mental construct, but if we would bring on a person that is less junior and more willing to do this, they would benefit from having a checklist of items like, uh, does this project have someone experienced in, you know, domain that they're working on for at least like five to 10 years and, you know, heuristics. Right. So, um, yeah, we can develop a checklist like that. I mean, right now the system has an inherent number of parameters like, you know, what, what is your structure? Are you a private limited? Are you whatever, a limited, limited partnership? Like I think some of those are already basic questions that help so determine like whether it's okay. for the pipeline. Um, so that's the deal side. Um, similarly, there may be lots of other um, organizations that fit the profile of what we call the enterprise support organization. A support organization can be the accelerator, the incubator, it could be Corona Y, it could be um, a university lab, it could be a competition. Anything that is aggregating and generating um, fundable projects. And so um, how you define that, what you deem to be acceptable for your community is also important. And um, and bringing those organizations on to say, look, when you bring on an organization, it is attributed to or sourced to you. It is referred by you. So it will show if it gets funded that it came through you as, uh, I don't know, Ashoka or your, you know, those are networks that are well known in the social entrepreneurship space. Um, so there's that. Um, it's not a as critical, but if you want to go to scale with the deal flow, with the investable packaged projects, you'll do well to have a few strong partners there. And they may already be there or they may not. You don't need it to curate such a system. It's just helpful. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, you may have a bunch of service providers from within the community of, I don't know how many, you know, it's over a thousand people, I'm sure now, your group. Yep. Um, within your community, you have people who could serve as service providers. They could be technical consultants, they could be um, impact auditors, they can be legal counsel, epidemiologists bringing scientific you know, input onto the viability of projects that investors or funders typically would find on their own. And so um, this is an opportunity for all of them to engage in the system as uh, something of a storefront, <coughs> provided that somebody out there on the funding side may solicit their services uh, or offerings. And how they solicit them is it, it, they would see their profiles as service providers around the specific task of financing a deal or funding a, a project. Basically, the, uh, the supply of uh, resources of various forms, right? Because it's essential, um, you know, relevant people or pieces of infrastructure that fit in to maximize viability and chances of success for this project. And in, in my head, it kind of all goes back to, you know, the CAA uh, model. I'm not sure if you're aware of the Creative Artists Agency that uh, kind of innovated the concept of um, they applied the the studio like the Hollywood concept of packaging uh, things and instead of being a talent agency that just sells uh, talent they actually take ideas or they they were taking ideas of these amazing talented individuals sculpting them into something amazing and then uh, selling it to uh, the actual investors that w were willing to to create a movie or series or shows and, and things like that. 
and that was later replicated by Andreessen Horowitz in, in, a, in a different way, in a different ecosystem, but that's essentially it. They built up a network of resources, partners, and people that can easily be plugged in. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I mean, I think that's, that's where it could go at the moment. Um, the service provider user profile on the system is just a directory of all kinds of competences, competencies. Um, and those themselves could be the ideas that get funded themselves. There's no, there's no um, barrier to that. Um, Let me show you something but, real quick. So sure. we actually have a person whose main job is skill optimization and organization. And she oh. this crazy sheet that basically oh my God. everyone that uh, is on, on board and transformed it into like navigatable thing. I, so, I yeah, so right there you have a drop down list of the competencies that are available within the ecosystem. And people can categorize themselves according to where they fit or which ones they would attribute to themselves. And um, we have, you know, we have, we had built it in the prior version of the system, but um, and we have to reinstate it in, in, in the next upgrade of the tool. But this is then, um, this is then uh, subject to user generated feedback. Yep. So if you say that you are, you know, a, 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 you know, a total whiz with a particular kind of data science modeling or whatever, and you get engaged to do that work, well, there's a user feedback loop that will attest to your success or... Exactly. And uh, are you aware of the concept called dot collector that was um, kind of uh, promoted by Ray Dalio? The, uh, let me ask you, are you familiar with Ray Dalio? No. So he's a hedge fund, uh, very successful hedge fund uh, founder, and he created Bridgewater Associate as um, as a way to kind of uh, you know innovate this industry with te technology. And he wrote a book called Principles, which is basically the the book that became my life and work manual. Uh, except it w wasn't uh, applicable to many real world scenarios because of how the word, world is functioning. But now I see that it's perfect timing to apply some of these ideas. And he actually, obviously his framework works well for him and Bridgewater Associates, but the ideas are amazing because essentially he introduced this concept of uh, believability and being able to um, create feedback loops about uh, expertise and uh, human qualities. And that, that's why you can see a lot of articles like at the world's largest hedge fund, the 24 year olds use dots to critique their CEO, which is obviously clickbait uh, and they don't really critique him, but they're able to, um, let me find where, they're able to rate meetings, they're able to like assess certain qualities and basically build up these, uh, you know, matrices that um, uh, represent the, um, the expertise and people's behaviors in an organization. And then they have AI tools that help them uh, reason with, with all of this data. That's just freaking brilliant. And that type, that type, those types of matrices, I think, are incredibly useful for um, niche thematics um, especially when you're when you're trying to the difficulty is um, you're gonna have you know hundreds of people each wearing their hats um, stepping in and 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 hopefully having a chance to to prove their worth and to have some sort of engagement um, this is the only way by which the only like democratic and distributed way by which we can actually assess who's doing what, who fits where. Unfortunately, there will be, I think, those who maybe don't fit at the end, at the end of the end of the end. Yep. But that's just, that's that's just okay. And that's what happens anyway. It's just that um, there's no visibility on that. And, you know, we, we went to India in the first four years and 
we didn't work with the right legal counsel. And, and had we had access to a matrix that would allow us to have some sense of the feedback and experience and sort of that, the, the, the thick context of those who were in practice, like practitioners, we wouldn't have freaking wasted so much time and, you know, gotten into so much shit. <laughs> And then we actually solved our problems, but it took time. And I think that there are ways to help people shortcut, especially when the outermost objective is, is, an, is impact, is we want to actually not spend time doing stuff um, that wastes time and, and just get to the heart of it by finding the best possible people. So, uh, super cool. So we already got a funnel of these uh, kind of uh, ideas naturally. Like, for example, I created this channel today with uh, another organization or let's say community of people that are creating uh, detection for x-ray images um, uh, for COVID. And they're creating open source web browser for x-ray imagery with built-in AI assistant. And they basically need help with some computer vision engineers, JavaScript engineers, uh, data sets help, and things like that. It's just a question of finding proper people and, and helping them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, right on. So, amazing. Um, that, that aspect of... Of a, of a well curated system that supports financing, I think is generally underrepresented in a lot of other systems and a lot of other platforms. The reason why um, we added it into the use of our tool in India was because we wanted to try to um, profile local service providers. Now, our success rate with this, frankly, you know, it's been it's been up and down, uh, and it's about curation again and being yeah. able to do it well, and f you know, full throttle all, all the time. Um, so we we haven't we don't have hundreds of service providers profiled. It's this very small network. The principle is that there are plenty of experts and advisors and technical. Look. You don't need to fly Deloitte or EY from like Washington or London to, you know, rural areas of, you know, Orissa to assess a project. There's plenty of people in Bhubaneswar to do that or in Mumbai or so, you know, even that's too far. So our goal was to try to localize uh, as much as possible and provide a better distributed net of competency. So anyway. Yeah, so we talked about the enterprises, we talked about the enterprise support organization, the service providers, and then finally you come to investor profiles. And it's a challenge to onboard investors. Investors are solicited every second of the day and probably three times a week to onboard themselves on different platforms these days. Um, and the truth is I don't yet know what the golden nugget is or what the what that you know yeah what the proposition is that you know that's uh, that's so that you know getting to yes convince that's so convincing that you know this is a no-brainer i don't yet know and we won't know until we test, you know and that's a lot of the stuff that we we been operating here in in corona live for uh, almost two months now we always accept the fact that we're wrong with our assumptions and the quicker we reach that state of aha moment that it's wrong, the better it is and the sooner we can iterate on it. So I would, I would say that let's outline that um, persona and the, the golden nugget, the value prop for that persona. Uh, and let's, let's just try. I don't think that the cold emails will work in this situation because fr frankly speaking, I actually tried reaching out to top Silicon Valley funds at the very beginning of, of this, and I got zero replies, um, which was quite uh, interesting. I, I at least expected like a couple of replies that, hey, sorry, we're, we're not interested, but in reality, zero replies. So um, I, I believe the only viable way is actually either collective kind of push let's say we get thousand people to tweet at you know someone to gather their attention which may look like harassment 
and maybe that's not the best way. But the second way, which is more probable and more effective, is actual referral stuff. So just yeah. network, uh, reaching out to, to different people. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with the latter. Um, and we can, I, th I think, again, um, before inviting these folks to the table, um, the, the effort has to be made uh, to share viable opportunities and to, and to, and also to, how many? Yeah, how many of these, like, like that project with the house lands? Uh, let's imagine if we get X amount of those. How many is enough to create this momentum and perception that it's a viable place to, to be present on? Um, From your experience in, in India, what was the inflection point? We need, you know, we needed like 40 or 50 deals. Um, Okay. But I don't think I don't think the threshold is that high here, um, because this is about um, this really is about like trying to coordinate urgent response and action. Um, just want to have like a decent ten to start, okay. something like that. Um, That's a good. I call. think it's worth. I think it's worth noting. I think we have uh, three already. Yeah, and. It's worth noting that it, and it's a, a thing is the, the kinds of projects and deals that are coming out of your, you know, convening and, and, and cluster um, are specific. They're technical, they're scientific, they're data, they're, they have implications for policymakers, public bodies, some private bodies. Um, they're not necessarily... Which Sorry. Is, we also have non-data ones, which is super. You do. Like PPE, like pro, uh, the protective equipment people. Okay. It's it's just that we're not able to fulfill their requests because we neither have you know people that have infrastructure or have experience with like physical production or like global supply chain things, like but they exist and they naturally come to us for help except we're not yet ready to help people that are not like this. right well there, there's those who are coming into the picture because they seek you know access to vendors and supply chain you know partners and stuff that's one thing and then there's those who are showing up and saying you know we need working capital um i think it'll be worth segmenting the projects you are seeing um between like product service um I, I don't know sub segments within that so that you know that the data data scientist tools like fit under product or something um i don't know exactly how to think about it yet but the un sdg people here in switzerland where i am are um also thinking about compiling uh pipeline uh, coming from different sources uh, that speak to different, um, mostly different geographies. Mm -hmm. uh, and into that pipeline, like we're putting, I put, I think four or five of our companies that our fund has invested in that are absolutely relevant to COVID response in India. Yeah, and uh, this is actually a very good point that you're bringing up because I've, uh, I've got multiple uh, inquiries from uh, from Ukrainian uh, researchers that are working specifically on Ukrainian type of like research and uh, statistical modeling and things like that to help the government there. And uh, again, I'm not able to fulfill their requests as of right now, but that's definitely a thing. The locality of these projects uh, is, is required. Yeah, so I think, you know, ultimately, uh, we were talking the other day about um, potentially having um, many multiple customized thematic variants of, 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 what we're, of, of a COVID funding platform. Um, this need... That, that would serve better as a, like categories or like tags, you know? 
I think that the taxonomy has to be thought through and consistent across them uh, so that there isn't people creating profiles and setting up data at cross purposes. I think the, the, the whatever you call it, the gestalt has to be very consistent um, for sure. So that's something to consider. Um, and then what you're talking about um, by, by the nature of what I understand Kaggle and Corona Y to have created is like you can have some of the projects that are coming out of your community be plugged in to almost every other um, appearance or variant of a COVID funding platform in different geographies because you're coming at it from a specific angle. Maybe less like equipment and masks and more like epidemiological tools and I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm talking about because I, I don't I'm not close enough to it. Yeah. So um, I see you as like the kind of the the, the, the technical mothership which de derives and determines what are the questions to be asked when you're looking at a viable model? And then like the questionnaires you showed me the other day with your um, the review and amalgamation of the scientific literature to in questions, you know, to me looked like our due diligence templates um, that could be yeah. this, adjusted, this beautiful thing, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> It, you know, so about, you know, it kind of <laughs> yeah. It's just it's got to be user driven, and and some users don't know what they don't know yet, um, and what you most. can offer most, and then what you can offer is guidance, templates, methodologies, questionnaires on top of the pipeline. Uh, and then, you know, it's, I don't think it's a far reach to also consider, you know, that's hard won knowledge. You've, you come at it with hundreds of other people to derive these, these elements, these tools, and maybe, you know, that template should be um, rent, you know, I should be able to rent that template <laughs> or yeah, kind of buy it. Open source, right? Yeah, buy it, rent it. Um, if I contribute to it and make it better, maybe I don't have to rent it, you know, or maybe I get it. Uh, not sure how off. you're aware of like the concept, the concept of open source, and you know things. Yeah, practices. some. But that's yeah. pretty much what you're describing: the Apache license and open source. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, I think the open source approach is useful for some, but I'm not sure it will resonate with all. Uh, I think the open architecture with a series of options approach. Um, the licenses. Might, the licenses uh, might be more, yep, more you know, flex. Just from observing the evolution of open source and how it's been misused by let's say malicious actors for profit like it definitely needs an evolution because there are multiple companies that are being crushed just because they're good by nature and you know they they cannot be sustainable if their thing is just taken and repurposed as you know a cloud solution for profit and yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, um, reputational cred um, and you know, free free riding and and the kinds of stuff that seems to happen around it. Um, it, it doesn't matter equally to to all players. Some folks just they're not worried about being good, right? They, they just yep. just worried about making money, which you know. It's a different so be, it, so be it. Yeah. But it's it's thinking about the design principles there. Um, we are, you know our our software software our our tool um, at the moment we we think of it as open architecture. Uh, we in the absence of a, of of a wider um, logic that would drive um, proper incentives in this market proper incentives for data interoperability, that's investment data, 
that's investment pipeline information, those incentives are not there yet. In the absence of that, we are open on a piecemeal basis to, well, we have a, open APIs and interoperability, but we haven't gone, you know, full Monty open source. Um, and to that point, I should mention, you know, for customization on code, that stuff um, we could do inside our team, um, but we're not yet like releasing code and yeah. having other people work on it. To be to be perfectly frank, we're too we're way too small. We're way too fragile, I think. Um, so that that's a challenge. It's a challenge. I'd like to get past that as a hurdle, but yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. Uh, we covered the this position of the human creator. We covered the uh, the actual goal of having 10 projects. We covered the, um, the, uh, uh, we haven't covered uh, uh, the messaging, right? Or how we? Um, I think that's, that probably needs to be co-created. Um, Do you want to start a Google Doc? On yeah. That? That's probably the yeah. most synchronous way for us uh, to do it. I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, because that messaging will not be, um, I think, singular. It will be messaging that's coming from many multiple sources. Um, there may be, you know, other end nodes uh, of groups in different cities and localities coming forward with, um, I mean, albeit with not a technical and scientific slant, but just a very practical products and services slant that are going to be coming up, all of which have to be able to um, get on their surfboards and ride ride your wave. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're entering this kind of stage of second order and third order consequences, long term consequences that people are not even really imagining in terms of the global supply disruption there's there are multiple possibilities of like hunger and like food deserts even in the u.s like, oh, wow. there are areas that were heavily uh reliant on like south american uh food supply chains and since that was kind of disrupted there will be long-term consequences there are already people that are thinking about it in some ways but there are no solutions and they're not they're there's not even public discourse about these things. And even in terms of mental health and how, for example, in the past two months, there is a real crazy vacuum in, in terms of a absence of coping mechanisms. Like people that are, you know, losing their family members, they don't have funerals. People are having, you know, virtual Zoom funerals and that's the most, like surreal thing ever and there are just so many of these things that we're not even aware of that will soon start uh, popping up and there will be you know i think there is a project mental health project that was suggested in our slack um and there will be many more so it's it's the same thing that you're doing. i think um we just i think it's just about um designing for a certain openness to it's I mean at the simplest most cosmetic level it's just hyperlinking um, people across to the places to the platforms um, the resources and tools that are going to support these second and third order fallouts like these consequences um, and so we're going we're gonna get like many layers deep like societal layers deep into the problem over time. Um, I don't know how many years we're talking. I don't know if it's one, two, five, I have no idea. But um, I think just in concrete terms, I don't know, this, it feels like, you know, we, we should just think like about nodes and just designing optimally for the node that there is. And knowing that there are going to be lots of other nodes popping up and then just having a messaging that is, I don't know, fluid enough, respectful enough and collaborative enough that we can, we can then, yeah, we can 
lift lift all these all these narratives you know um of pipelines of opportunities to make things better yeah and, and we need those because again people will will question these things and people will also they have to align with certain you know values and principles and like missions right and those are crucial pieces that have to exist in order for us to even um you know uh, make sure that we're getting the right people into the platform to avoid any confusion and frustration which have happened a couple of times now in corona y because we don't have those out and i kind of started uh, doing that in a very rough form just to give you a glimpse of it yeah it's not really like corona y thing it's just like you know human uh, things like values principles, and missions representing why how and what vision level is very like values what we believe in and why we're here principles yeah. is how to deal with reality methods and mission is short-term and long-term goals and that's it yeah. um it's funny my colleague my colleague and i are involved in discussions with a group um, focused on water and sanitation um in a in a specific region and before we're starting our project focusing on a platform tool to you know aggregate deal flow in their specific context we we've all just filled out um ex like something that looks almost exactly like this values assessment uh tool so that we can fit it's like in the absence of mandatory personality testing um and you know we're just trying to figure out well yeah. what's everybody here motivated by? yeah well, it's important, like, what are we all motivated by? What's going to disappoint us? What are our hopes? Like, what, what's going what's gonna to constitute success? And, um, and hopefully people are honest when they answer the questions. Just, uh, and that's also one thing that bridges this multidisciplinary collaboration, because we all speak such different languages, and we, we come from different backgrounds, different cultures, and it's a magic that we're able to talk to each other at all. And we've seen many conflicts uh, or like, you know, clashes because people don't understand that, you know, we, we come from different backgrounds. For example, there are a couple of people that uh, are from Ukraine and they're very straightforward. Uh, there is a person who is from Ukraine and lives in Netherlands, which is even more straightforward society. And that's like 10x straightforwardness. And when, you know, speaking with uh, Americans in general, um, that that clash of cultures is very explicit. So the only thing that helped us bridge those things and resolve uh, clashes was the actual, uh, we created this channel called Motivations and Purpose, and uh, we just let people uh, type in why, why they, they're here. And then everything became obvious that we all share the same motivations it's just that we use different speech, lack of yeah. speech, and we frequently don't understand each other, but we speak about the same things. Yeah, it's just though you know it doesn't. It it comes back to that book um, that that guy Ben Horowitz wrote uh, about what you do is who you are. Oh my that God, I love that book. I, I love that book. <sighs> and 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 that it's hard because it's one thing to talk about your values but um do it. <laughs> it virtue is values in action so those have to be demonstrated and shown you can't just like stamp it on the wall and expect it to work for you and it's it's hard it's hard in transactions and in something as fluid as what you're doing and and even in the context of a funding platform where we have lots of different types of users and in theory you know it should work because we should all be aiming to the same objective of providing critical support um, to help our societies deal with COVID better and to support the businesses that are that are critical. But I mean, the, the shades of gray, I mean, between people there, I can only imagine. So I'm not sure how we put how we enshrine the values into virtues. It should be enshrined in 
the lens we the lens we use to assess the way we package the, the language of the, the the fields for the profiles and also how rewards and success are dealt with yeah i think i 100 percent agree and yeah I, I don't have an answer yet but the the line of thinking Me neither. Is, is the same so yeah let's just do our best try to come up with these you know values principles and and missions and i think that will at least put us closer to this convergence of of uh, things that we want to create how much how much more time do you have i have about 10 minutes okay so probably the the last thing to to discuss is how to actually uh, deploy whatever we can on our uh, cloud infrastructure is there like a devops guide that you have uh, or or someone you can connect me with yes um so i will put you in touch with my tech dev lead um i do want you to uh, though connect with my colleague um ken because he has um you know he's the one who has formulated like you know how how we set up like an MOU, how how we get it formalized a little bit, nice. um, and um, and then on the the technical side, what we what we need to get done. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, let's go through the stages of the bureaucracy. Even though we wouldn't really have an end, you know, that that's a crazy part. Like, I guess I will sign it in in some way or something yeah i mean i i have a pretty good sense of the informality and the um, the formality and the informality that you're juggling uh and so it's really just um i think it's just form uh so we have something um but it would be really good i'd, I'd, I'd love for you to also uh, meet ken um my colleague so it'd be good to do that um can you i will connect us so we can have a, a call i'll do it on email yeah 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 i'll do that so um that sounds good and for other questions that we haven't covered yet we can also just do it in writing like i can just write notes or something in the slack on the messaging stuff okay yeah okay all right cool uh, to summarize my deliverables are uh, figure out this uh, position for curation and management of the platform yeah. um, and probably create a small checklist for that and share it with you for feedback. Uh, please create the messaging stuff. I'll add to it too. And please connect me with the uh, technical team. I'll, I'll take a, uh, a call with them to understand how to make it happen. And please okay. connect me and to have the uh, conversation on how to establish it more uh, in, in terms of organizational level and okay. that's about it okay so I'll start the messaging doc then all right sounds great, great. got it okay thanks Arthur Arthur thank you so much, thank you very much. take care